Ready to learn how to lock down power and smash the finish? We're gonna talk about part two of how to throw the discus in this video. Check it out. Hey everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Merite Throws Nation. In today's video, we are going to continue from our last video, which was kind of a setup. We went through some terminology, and today we are gonna be talking about pillar five and pillar six. So what, what does that mean to you? How do we create a ton of power, and how do we nail that finish in our discus? And that's what we're gonna be talking about here. And you didn't catch the last video, definitely check that out. We covered some terminology and things that we'll be using in today. And if it is your first time here, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. So again, one of the things we talk about in the throwing chain reaction is we wanna look at how we set up the throw and how that influences throw. It happens super fast, one and a half to two seconds. Most of these athletes are closer to that two second range and we have one advanced high school thrower in this clip. But now we're gonna look at things in terms of the six pillars. We just looked at one, pillar two, pillar three, right? Now you can see the positions, pillar four, pillar five, and what we're gonna do is then finish up big and six. So the whole point of the six pillars is, as you can see, it's visual. Now you see how I have this locked right here? This is pillar five. You're gonna notice that each of these athletes are in different mechanical positions. And what we're gonna do is, again, you can learn a ton by looking at the best throwers in the world. So if we're looking at like uh, Sandra Perkovich or Yami Perez, the current world champion from Cuba, uh, Daniel Stahl, uh, Frederick Dakers, you know, a number of these guys, the thing that you're gonna notice is that they're doing so many things right they're throwing at a very high level, big, strong, very athletic, years and years of work to get to the point where they're at. And now when you look at the developing thrower, you see the challenges that you're going to face as a thrower or as a coach. If you're a thrower, you're going to be able to relate to one of these images. You may see your future self. You may see your current self. And if you're a coach, you might be in a situation where you have all of these. Most of these athletes, I've worked with all of these athletes and the ones that I'm not working with, they're using the throwing chain reaction system. It really helps to keep things organized, keep everybody on the same language and looking at the throw for the similar things. And that's what's one of the main things. So again, what we showed you was the six pillars. Again, looking at each thrower here, you're going to notice that's different. So this is the beginning of pillar five. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take our throwers as they come out of pillar three into pillar four. And now I'm going to move you from that transition. So right here, we start moving. And now we're going to start our pillar five. And you're going to see big differences. So we talked about radius, we talked about high point in the last video, and we talked about axis of rotation. How do we pivot in the, on the delivery leg into the throw? And so here's a perfect example. This athlete, too far, too active with the upper body. This athlete, again, younger, too, too active with the upper body. If I run it back a click and you look here, you're gonna see how they shorten the arm, the hips are a little back, the discus is a little low. Um, this athlete up here, uh, you're going to notice again when we get to that pillar five, brand new. This was the first week. This athlete had only been throwing weeks, so this is pretty good position. Nice level shoulders. We would work on kind of maybe making that arm a little longer, but some a lot of good stuff going on here. Here's a 10-year-old athlete that's super talented, hits fantastic positions, and we go in the next video when we talk about pillar three, four, and we go from the whole thing from one all the way through the whole pillar six, you're going to see that this athlete is arguably maybe has some of the best technique here and she's only 10. Here's another athlete, you're gonna see shoulders a little high, discus is dropping down, she comes out of a good high point, but her body kinda of tilts like this. Um, she's new to the system, we're addressing strength issues, and these are all things that are gonna play into your technical development. And then we have this athlete here, very talented, um, has thrown quite far as a 16 year old, you're gonna notice the difference that this is on par with what you're seeing with more elite throwers. You're gonna notice that the hip position, um, the knee ahead, we've got the lower body moving ahead, this really nice stretch, hips underneath, gonna create fast rotation. And so as we come into our pillar six, the thing that we're gonna be looking at, right, this is our pillar five. So again, what do we want? Hip under the shoulder, mechanical positions. We want to see that knee pushing in front of the toe. Good good movement here. Not as good, it's a little more up here because the upper body being so active early is pulling the athlete out of position. You can see how this athlete's shoulders are behind. And again, this is where we're going to use this athlete and this athlete are the best technically. And you're going to notice when we take it back just a click again, and you see right here how the shoulders are level, level, you see that? 
and you see how these are open and tilted these are tilted and these are level. So the key things that we're really looking for when we get, we call it pillar five and you start that power position, we want those hips underneath the shoulders and we want those shoulders level. That's gonna create a whole bunch of good things. You're gonna be able to rotate faster into your finish. This is where we're getting down. And we're also talking about once we get to that pillar five position and everybody locks it in, we wanna see that block foot on the ground this one you can see is a little up. We got both feet kind of in this direction and we wanna see that block foot down a little bit more. You can see here, this is good. This foot's floating in the air and this foot's getting popped on the ground really nice so they're gonna gauge the block. So mechanically, again, this is how we're trying to set up maximum power and lock it down. We always talk about that. We wanna see those double loaded legs so we're gonna rotate faster and move into the direction of the throw. So when you wanna create more power into your finish, you gotta be down on the ground. You want that hip under the shoulder, shoulders level. And again, you're gonna notice that the chest is slightly, you got this very, very mild angle here. Okay, so as you come around, you have to move this way. If your shoulders are back, you'll see this athlete. And again, that's because the athlete's too active with the upper body. And so the athlete's pulling back and this athlete's here. Now, what's gonna be interesting as we go into pillar six, what we're gonna be looking now is blocking this side, blocking the leg, keeping the foot on the ground, okay? We wanna see the long path of the shoulder as it comes out of five into six. You can see this athlete, you can't really see the arm. This athlete, you can see they're already pulling open. This athlete, the elbow's coming up. This athlete, the elbow's up way too high, so that's keeping this. So she's going like this, and that's gonna create a shift. What are we looking at when we go through mechanically for pillar six? Why was I explaining that? Because if the shoulders stay level and long and around, you're gonna be able to engage that block. This is what I think the new athlete does very well. This athlete has been a glide shot putter and is pretty new to the discus as well, but you see how she's pulling over and she had come to this practice and hadn't thrown in a long time. Again, and this athlete blocks, but it was so early that when she stopped here, it becomes a slap. This athlete, again, you can see the young athletes pulling down a little bit, but stops that block side. And what, what I'm trying to point out here from a mechanical standpoint, there's a lot of information. Pull the arm in. I've seen coaches who teach that. I don't disagree with it, but there's a real fine line between pulling in and pulling back behind you, you see that difference. And you're gonna notice that the more advanced throwers, you're gonna notice this on the world level, that when they hit, they stop the block and everything comes around. So you're gonna see how this athlete is just crushing the hips through, great block leg. This athlete is working on that, but the shoulder and now the elbow are behind the back, elbows behind the back, elbows slightly behind the back. And now look at, this is your more, more advanced athlete. This is a multi-time <clears throat> national champion. And again, an athlete that I've worked with since the age of 11, she's 17 now. And you can see the, the positions. Now, when you see, I'm gonna show you this as, as we finish. These are the positions, so look at the lines. You can see, again, you wanna see how this athlete, the spine line's a little off. This one's relatively straight, but pulling backwards right and you can see again this one pulling backwards pretty decent spine line a little bit of a tilt here but everything stopped and still a nice stretch on the discus but you can see our more advanced athlete is really extending the radius and the spine line is a little bit this way which is what you're going to see with more elite throwers and so as you come through watch what happens as once the discus leaves the hand we're going to see the byproduct of the good mechanical position so as the discus goes and we take everything away you can see how this athlete is pulling around this athlete's pulled around as we continue to go up on the top athlete, arm is still stopped, arm is still stopped, arm is pulling around. Look at the advanced athlete. Hits, comes through, look at the follow through. See how the arm stayed with the side of the body? So that's gonna be really important to understand that block. It, it comes and everything moves out and around. So when we take it back one more step and we look at our more advanced athlete, we're gonna see that. Watch how the arm stays long. When she comes out, again, look at that level, that shoulder comes up a little. If she maintained it all the way around, it'd be even that much better. But now you can see as she comes through and hits, and again, always after the release, as we come through the reverse, she's coming all the way through, and you can see how, again, recovery, 
on balance block arm still staying with the side of the body now that's looking at it and this is what I said briefly at the beginning there's many things you can look at and today we were going to focus on your core positions and those mechanics and understanding those kind of core things remember strength rhythm all these things play a factor into what you're trying to do when you're working on your throw and that's the whole point of our six pillar throwing system we want to be able to show you and look what's more optimal in the position again we want to throw optimally right everybody's going to have their best way to throw so not everybody's going to throw the same way but we show you how the six pillars what are we trying to do is isolate and show you what are the core mechanics that we're trying to achieve and then as you get better and better your own style will evolve so remember, pillar five is we're locking down power, and pillar six is we're really finishing big, and that's that monster finish that everybody wants. Last thing, when we look at the mechanics, when we look on pillar six, again, look at that knee going in front, look at that knee going in front, watch everything coming around. See, this athlete is struggling to get that knee, and so she's not really able to get those hips around, and so she's pulling the upper body and that's why she pulls down and almost pulls off balance. This athlete is doing something similar. This athlete is new and this was a personal best and again had only been throwing a week so that was a really good thing. Had been trained on the most recent version of the throwing chain reaction system and had been doing a really great job and this athlete's coach uses the throwing chain reaction system from day one. That's what this athlete's learned. She's only 10 and she has phenomenal technique. As we go through the next videos coming up, right, I'm going to cover the trans transition from I'm going to talk about how we get speed into the middle and how we create that big rewrap and high point so that we're creating all this tension that's going to lead into our pillar five six so that's what's coming up on the next video if you guys have questions I'd like to hear what stood out most in this video comment below if there's anything else or any questions you have about this video be sure to comment below remember if you are interested in diving in more we have nine different drills for pillar five we have nine different drills for pillar six part of our pillar five drills is we what we have is pillar connection is that connection of what that movement of five to six so we have five drills in there for that if you'd like to learn more about the throwing chain reaction system visit our website click the link in the description and if you missed anything check out the last video and we'll see you on the next video <laughs>